Holy <laughs> There's a Corolla under here. Alright, you got this. Ugh. What a car. And we're clear. What is up everyone? Today is the first major snowstorm of the year that I've been a part of. Now, that means we finally get to test the all-wheel drive Corolla in the snow. And if you guys are from a snowy climate, you know all-wheel drive snow drifts are like the funnest thing to do. Now, not every all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive car drifts the same, right? There's a bunch of different factors. Weight distribution, suspension, tires, uh, and power distribution, right? That's probably one of the biggest ones. As you guys might know, the way that all-wheel drive systems display power is differently between each manufacturer, every car, whatever, as my camera's falling down. But some cars are more real wheel drive bias, some cars are more front-wheel drive bias, and that all affects the way that it drifts, right? A car like this, I would assume is more front-wheel drive bias, which means it's probably going to want to understeer or just kind of lunge in the snow. So you really have to swing the car to get them sideways, but once they're sideways, they're moving. But this car also has very, very little weight in the rear, which might make it a little bit more drift happy. We're gonna find out. Either way, I think I'll figure it out and we'll get this thing sideways, but I'm very excited. So we have a Toyota Corolla all-wheel drive system, um, some really old snow tires, and about 80 horsepower. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> So it looks like the roads are actually pretty good by now. Uh, so we're not gonna be doing any snow drifting on the way to the shop. So let's grab the boys, find a lot or something, and then test this thing out. Cause I am so curious to see how this thing actually does in the snow. My morning Duncan routine, I have to go in reverse cause their car is right hand drive. And you'd be surprised at how many people it just pisses off. It's kind of funny. Also it confuses old people like really bad. Have a great day. The funny thing is, I've never really gotten a reaction from a fast food employee before. Like, I'm not doing it to get a reaction, but like, you would think at least one person would be like, yo, the hell are you doing? No. I wonder if they plowed the back lot. Ooh, it's still a little snowy. First test, clutch kick. Woohoo! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. It swung a lot more than I was anticipating it to. Too bad this thing has zero power, so I'm gonna have to clutch kick this thing all day, and hopefully not blow the clutch apart. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> all right, there is some grippy spots there. Looks like Donnie's here. And then we got Tony. <laughs> There's so much snow in the bed. You ready, kid? You ready? I'm so ready. Two goofballs are in DJ's car. I, I won't hurt them. Is this your first time snow drifting? With you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been in a car with assholes in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so the best time to go snow drifting is like two or three hours after it started snowing, right? There's just a little bit on the ground. It's pretty even. But uh, it's like kind of warm out already, so it's melting quite a bit. So we're gonna have to find a, a, a lot that might have already been driven through but not plowed. There's a little spot right here, this little corner. This That's little corner, yeah, yeah. It's a little mushy. It's melting fast. Oh look, see it's compact right here. That's what we want, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, All right, let's see. Can we get this thing to swing out? Oh yeah. Oh, we're so sideways. <laughs> oh shit! <Whoa! laughs> no, that might be the end of this. Oh, I just hit the curb so hard. We're good, we're good. Gucci? Yeah, we're good. Wait, steering wheel go straight? I got used to the mini truck where I just don't give a shit. Look at that. That's right, straight. straight. Nothing's bad. It hit the steering <laughs> I just want to make sure I didn't put the bumper up. You hit the Dude, curb. I hit the curb. The <laughs> we're good, we're good. I might have damaged the hubcap, but... <laughs> that must have been so funny from DJ's angle. We got a... You probably care a little bit more in this thing. I got too used to the Subarus. <laughs> Industrial parks, always a safe bet. It's like already just slush, dude. We're not looking for slush. The slush isn't as predictable, but. Yeah. Let's see, can we just get Whoa. this thing to like. Whoa! Whoa! Hold on tight, Steve. Shame on them. Hey, okay. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Okay, yeah. nice. Wow, this thing has forward bite. 
A lot of grip. No side bite. Side bite, zero grip. All right, we found a spot, we found a spot. It's about time, we've been looking for a long time. It's a little tight, we'll figure it out. Look at this, see like this is perfect. Just a, a couple inches, not enough to slow the vehicle down. Just enough to be able to like, yep. Dip. And then just manji a little bit. Uh huh. Like this, right? And then try and drift this, ready? Where we got it? Drift this corner. Easy. Easy. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, that and was fire. You break 180. Oh, we just go straight. Yeah. Smooth, yeah. right? That was fire. You got a little uh, hairy, but you, good save. Great save. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll see what's in the back for sure. You think DJ's stuck in this? Like, is this a road? Do you think that's a parking lot, grass, or a curb, or what? <laughs> RJ's assessing the <laughs> other situation. The terrain? The he looks fucking nuts with that. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> What does it look like? I think it's grass. <laughs> That's all grass. Yeah. Thank God for technology. Yeah, yeah, all right. Let's just, let's not do that. Let's try and run that little line back, all right? Let's do it. I was hoping to do something a little faster, but this will get us going. Let's do it. I won't bash. I'll just go out this window or that one. <laughs> we just slid out. Hold on, dude. I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good save, Johnny. That was I awesome. made me so sick from my perspective. It it'll unload out of nowhere. This is a nice frame right there. You stay there. I'm gonna do a donut around you. Okay. I thought I was going into the side. <laughs> I thought of you were going into the side of it He got close to the bag, bro. He got close. How tight was that? You got fucking close. I was just waiting for the boot. I saw you out of my fucking peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> it's losing it. <laughs> oh, he's curb eating, number two. He's eating curbs. You saw the first curb. Jimmy, can we get a curb counter on this video? <laughs> curb count. The snow is not good right now. How many curbs? Right two. I'm a slap and tickle. A slap and tickle. <laughs> that one looks like you felt it. <laughs> oh, he's asking to get hit now. You got plenty of time to stop, DJ. You got a snub nose. I can't believe oh, you he's didn't. asking for it. He's asking for it. I'm trying so hard. It won't won't go sideways. Your hubcap's about to come off. Yeah, that's from hitting the curb. Okay. <laughs> He said it so like, hey. Okay, he meant to do it. <laughs> He's coming. Oh. 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 He's fucked. Oh. 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 <laughs> I heard that. Curb count was not good right now. Three. Was the bumper fine? Three good ones. We're good. Those this, are some good hubcaps. This thing is indestructible. It's bad because like the issue here, it's all slush, right? So we have like these really slippery parts and most of it is kind of dry. So we have to beat the crap out of the car to kind of get through the dry spots. Yeah. But then you'll hit an ice spot and then you just lose all sense of grip. All sense of grip. So I'm definitely trying to push it harder than it definitely should be because I just want to see this thing sideways. You're not scared to hit a curb either. No. 
I mean, the thing's, the thing's taller than curbs. <laughs> Show him your sneakers right oh, now. Oh, that's oil from my van. <laughs> He's an off white. Off white in the snow. Idiot. Uh, I just want one solid clip of this thing just doing a big sweeper. I want to prove that it's a good drifting car and not just me whacking curbs with it, trying to make it happen. Right. Sometimes it's easier downhill. Uh -huh. Just a little sketchier. And you gotta nice reverse control. it real quick. Just nice. like that, you see that? Nice control. Real quick. Yeah. And then we're in that. That's what we're talking about. We'll get this going. We just gotta wait till we find an actual predictable snow patch. It's surprising that snow is still on there. I kept it for aesthetics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that illegal? Yeah. I've never done something illegal. <laughs> you know, I don't wanna say nothing, but this car used to pull real hard to the right after we hit a couple curbs. Look at it. Dead straight. Curb alignment? That's it. Hit me up if you need one. <laughs> okay, ready? We're gonna launch it, right? Oh, this thing's so good. Ready? Just spin it around. Ooh. Dry spot. Is that another curb? This thing's a freaking animal, dude. So the goal is to not end up in that pond because there's no curb there to save us. Please. Aw, oh, dude, it's just so, all these dry patches. Oh, can we drift this? Ready, hit it with the faint. Let's hit it. Hey. Oh, dude, this thing's an... <laughs> Beyond trying to, like, snow drift this thing, it's an animal. Who would've thought? Who would've thunk? All-wheel drive Corolla. That is bitch in the Northeast. <laughs> all right, so we didn't get the snow uh, drifting that we wanted, but we got a test of it, and honestly, the car did amazing, and that has me very excited for the next time we can get out where the snow is actually uh, plentiful enough to drift, predictively, at least. I don't know, I tried to send it, and it just was a mess. We just need it to be more slippery. Now we it just need more consistency. Well, yeah. It was all slush. Slush and pavement. It was a good time, though. Yeah. So yesterday, I actually filmed like an entire video about the E36, and I decided to scrap it because I realized it was a video of me just explaining why I cut up my car because I saw a lot of comments from the previous video about cutting the E36 up, and a lot of them honestly upset me. And then I realized most of the comments that were negative were from people who I think and I don't mean this like in a disrespectful sense, but just doesn't completely understand uh, wheel fitment and why I did what I did, which is fine, right? Besides, obviously, you know, you cut up a stock body car, whatever. My fenders were already destroyed. It's a 325, whatever. Yes, the big one is I could, I'm, I, don't, I just want to talk about this real quick. I don't want to drag it on like I did yesterday. So yes, I could have molded E46 flares on, right? That's the thing. Yeah. The problem is I could have done it, but it would have taken me a way longer time than is realistic for filming YouTube videos, right? That's a, a big part of this, yeah. re realistically. And to pay someone to do it, it just probably would have never gotten done. Mm -hmm. It would have taken forever. The car would have been sitting on Jackson's apart for even longer and uh, whatever. Over fenders, not wide body, uh, was my way to get into the next evolution of this car, right? I, I wanna enjoy it in a, in a different way. And trust me, I've always been an advocate for stock body. I do not like cutting cars up. This one took a lot for me to do it, as you guys saw. It took me a year just to do it. So here's the thing, right? A lot of guys were yelling at me. Um, and as you can tell, we put a, a thicker tire on it yesterday. Um, we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, a lot of guys were yelling at me about, why didn't you just put a better tire on it, right? We talked about how if I wanted to put a bigger tire on the car, I'd have to change my wheel setup. And the wheel setups that work on the car with a bigger tire is just not my style. I don't like the look. It's just... One of those things like, yeah, it would have been grippier and fast, but it, like at the end of the day, if it's not matching your style, that's you're only winning half the battle. And I want to try and find a solution where I could win most of the battle here. So a lot of guys said, okay, take your eclairs because everyone knows that I want to leave these on a car because these wheels mean a lot to me. Put a good tire on it, raise a car and I'm done. The problem is you put a good tire on it and raise it, the wheel's still poking out two inches. Yeah. And you're just going to still bash your quarter panel when it squats, right? That's the thing. And then a lot of guys were like, okay, Relip them. The problem is to relip them to fit. I would have have to basically remove the entire lip. So right now, I think it has like a two and a half, three inch lip. Mm -hmm. I would have had to essentially run zero lip yeah. to make them fit. Which one isn't going to look good. And two, one of the coolest aspects of the Eclair wheel is they come with a Radinox lip. And if you guys don't know what this is, this is a stainless steel step lip. Now, can you get that? I don't think so. These were made in the early 2000s, late 90s. It is the company even still around? No, you cannot get these things. Obviously. Running these wheels 
running the style I want while running stock body just was not an option. And I know it doesn't really make sense for a lot of people, but trust me, I put a lot of thought into this stuff. There's a reason why it took me so long to get to this point, like, cause I know this was gonna be an issue. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't a hasty thing. I don't, I don't usually, I usually put a lot of thought on this stuff. As much as you guys think I don't, I really do. So the only thing I wanna do is potentially rebarrel these wheels because if you rebarrel them, you're not changing the outer fitment, right? What you're changing is how deep it fits in the wheel well. So if you have room in the wheel well to fit more lip, do it because then you could fit a bigger tire. And so right now, here we go. As you guys see, the car is now on the ground and it has a little bit thicker tires on it, right? It's nice to see it on the ground. Way thicker than what was on it, look at Way that. Way thicker, so essentially we went from a 215.40 to a 245.40. Now, a 245.40 still sounds small, but you gotta remember, uh, BMW grip. BMWs have a lot of mechanical grip. They make a lot more useful the tire. A really high compound tire on a 245 will do a lot, especially with zero camper, which we, we took the camper out yesterday. Now, do I want to run a 245? No, I want to run bigger, but we got a 245 on some really cheap tires just to see how it fit, right? Just for testing. Just for testing, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah. So that was my spiel. I didn't want to talk too much, but I feel like I really had to get it out there. Bri, you want to say something, buddy? Uh, I, don't, I didn't listen to any of your spiel. I just walked in the door, so You heard me crying it. about it yesterday, so. Have you, have, you, have you made any like alignment adjustments yet? I, so I took the camber out of the rear. It okay. still has a bunch of tail. Naturally, yeah. BMWs, when you lower them, they get a bunch of tail. You have to put correction plates and I still have to put them in. But besides that, I took the camber out all around. And I think, dude, looking at the car, if you come back here, like the car is technically still slammed. You just don't notice it because the wheel arch is cut out. But the car is still very low, body low. Um, but it looks so usable now. Before the car was so useless. Right now, I, the car has a whole new presence to it like as a whole new aura i feel yep. like yep it's exciting to see once you get like some real tires these are just placeholders those are placeholders they're, they're, yeah you guys got to understand that these are the only tires. reason they're cheap tires is because they're placeholders yeah. and they were purchased just to test <laughs> yeah so these will be drift <laughs> tires for my mom next season yeah exactly <laughs> So, this, so here's the thing, right? We're gonna continue talking, but this is the big deal that I really want to make today. So we mocked up the over fenders yesterday. Probably, I, I literally threw away that whole video because I was so annoyed with it. But check this out, right? Don Musk over fenders that we've been gassing up forever now. The, right? These are it's just such a beautiful kit. They fit amazing. It uses the factory body line super well. But what I was nervous about was them not fitting in the rear because they're really not that aggressive. A lot of guys know that if you bow over fenders, right, mm. you can make the flare come out a little bit more. It's like a cheat code. But as of right now, we are way too far away to run the rear ones. Like already hitting the rear. Obviously, we're going to take uh, toe out, which will fix that. But we're already like, we're too far away in the yeah. rear, I think, to want to run these. And that's only because I want to go, I want to go real thick with it. Like I want to make it count. But the yeah. problem is you get to a point on over fenders where is the car starting to look wide body? Because I don't want it to look wide body. We tested the front, the, the fronts fit beautifully beautiful I'm super happy with the front but the rear just it's just it's just not enough my buddy is actually hooking me up with my literally my second favorite over fender kit he happened to have it laying around it's like the craziest luck of the draw and they're a decent amount wider and they're going to show up next week so we're going to mock those up and if i don't like them we'll try and make these fit but i really just want to get something that i never have to think about rubbing again mm -hmm. really i just want to make it i don't want to have to like rig things up I just want to make it right. So next week you'll see the new over fenders and they're also very beautiful. So we're just, I just, I'm just trying to make progress here. That's it. Just trying to do my thing. I'm trying to enjoy this car. All right. I got to stop talking, but we got to use the rest of the day for something very important. We are actually shooting our next music video. It's going to be a, a simple one, but we're shooting it for DJ. I'm a fe I'm fe I'm a featured artist. You're a featured, um, you're our first featured artist on Talk To Me Nice Studios. Talk To Me Nice Studios. We made a YouTube channel for posting stuff like this. So I'll put the link in the description if you guys haven't already subbed. Please sub because the video is going to come out probably in like two days. We'll see. I really wanted to get DJ on a track, so we basically made a song to get DJ on there, and it's pretty good. I'm pumped on it. So I DJ's rapping on it. it. I can't wait to, to make it. You it's, killed it. Well, I had some ghostwriters, but it was good. But you honestly, like rap, rapping on the beat is for a lot Bring harder it than, than it, than, it think, yeah. than you think, and DJ somehow like got it first take, and I'm still blown away by it. Spicy Jack, help. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's so uh, we're going to do that. Anything to add to that? Nice work. <laughs> Are you ready for the Hall & Oates song? Dude, I'm, we're going to kill it. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm in doing my me, 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 me. And give me something. Uh, Mike G. Fa la 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 la. Ooh. Ooh deep the tone. Deep bass. All right, but we got to get to work, so we're going to end it here. So sorry about all the talking and whatever, but you guys know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. And Donald, have a great one.